Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm Regina Montgomery, the public and member coordinator for the Chamber of Commerce. Earlier in the show, we spoke with Pete Renshaw, who is the president of the Chamber, and we talked about the initiative of Live Here, Buy Here. Um, recently, Dufferin.biz conducted their survey in, co in collaboration with CCI Research. Um, they conducted a telephone research uh, survey to find out about the shopping patterns here in Dufferin County, and actually the findings were great. They were 80 percent of people were very pleased with what they found here in Dufferin County. So here to talk more about those findings is Teresa Soren, who is the marketing coordinator with uh, Dufferin.biz. Thank you for joining us today, Teresa. Thanks, Regina. So let's delve into it. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about these findings. Um, you know, why did Dufferin.biz conduct this survey and what did they find? So Dufferin.biz has been um, working, doing economic development marketing for Dufferin County for about two years now and you know we hear a lot of things as we move through the community and we talk to different committees and we go and meet with different groups and we hear a lot of stuff sort of on the street anecdotal stories about um, you know what's available here what's not available here people shop here people's <coughs> shopping patterns you know people say this is a commuter town people shop you know where they work and and these sorts of things and and we didn't have any numbers to back that up we had a lot of talk and not a lot of data and so we really thought it was very important to get a really good sense of that in actual numbers. <coughs> so what we did was we, we worked with CCI Research to des design a survey that would really try and capture that information about where are people shopping, what are they shopping for, and if they're not buying it here, where are they buying it? Because that's also interesting to understand where are people going out to. Um, and so the, the survey was conducted um, earlier this year, and uh, CCI Research did... I think about 5,000 mm -hmm. phone calls um, to, to get 600 telephone surveys completed. And, uh, and so th they have their confidence levels and everything. So it's, it's relatively accurate, I believe. And, you know, you mentioned 80% of people are satisfied with their shopping experience, which I think is a really positive, yes. a positive sign and actually a little bit, you know, uh, more positive than some of the stories you hear on the street, right? Because you do <laughs> hear some yep. stories that people are saying, we don't have this here and we don't have that here. Um, but the reality is that most people seem to be pretty satisfied. So, so if we look at this, some of the comments um, that people had were they wanted to see larger department stores in the area, which, you know, understandably, I under, you know, with a lot of the commuter traffic that we have and a lot of people working to the south, I'm sure they encounter a, lar a lot of these larger department stores. But let's talk about that. I mean, maybe, maybe for the consumer it's a great thing, but when we look at some of the um, businesses in our community, is it a great thing? How does it work? Which, what are your thoughts on that? Well, and I think that, you know, what we're coming out of this research with is a lot of raw data. And I think really the next step now is to sort of pre present a little bit of an analysis of that to understand really what are the opportunities here. And absolutely, I think that one of the strong um, comments that came out of this was we need to have sort of bigger department stores. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of names mentioned around Costco and the Bay and right. Sears and these sorts of stores. So, and, and you're exactly right. Then there needs to be an understanding of what, what makes the most sense for the community because these are again just you know residents respondents right so this is one perspective and then there's going to be another perspective in terms of what is the community and what are the organizations in the community looking for so the BIAs and of course the chamber and and the municipalities through their economic development committees and these sorts of things and and the other piece of the reality is what do we even have available with respect to land um, available land and space right. and labor force and these are the sorts of things that the big companies look for when they do their own market research about why to come to a community so you know this is one perspective and I think that it's a valid perspective and, and we need to we need to provide that analysis but we need to add in all those other layers of analysis as well to come up with the complete picture. Now we're going to take a look at a small clip we have from a business in Grand Valley. Um, I know Grand Valley's done a lot of work to improve their downtown core. They also have a large uh, subdivision coming there very soon. So let's take a look at Haramosa. Hermosa uh, means beautiful in Spanish, and I just was thinking that I wanted to name it Hermosa because I wanted everything inside the store to be represented as beautiful things, and and uh, it was uh, it really sounded nice as and the word boutique obviously is a um, it uh, shows that everything in the store is a little bit of everything. I guess. 
what makes me unique is the fact that I have a variety of things and when I put things together um, things seem to blend color wise and a lot of customers have commented on how well everything looks and they appreciate the fact that there is a variety of things because it does serve pretty much everybody's purpose. Um, I hope to achieve that people do stay in town and that they don't always have to drive out of town um, for birthdays, anniversaries, um, even just for items that you feel that you want to treat yourself for the day and um, just and price range to have a little bit of everything <coughs> allows uh, the opportunity for all kinds of people to shop and uh, it's a beautiful downtown so I just was hoping to uh, beautify the downtown as much as possible. Well you just you just talk about it with your customers on a daily basis. Um, you ask them where they're from and and you you encourage them to shop here. Um, a lot of people because the store is fairly new they ask why the store is here and then that's an opportunity to discuss that and I just bring home that with the, the economy nowadays that you can save the gas and 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 people's timing time is full and just gives them the opportunity to not always have to travel it cuts some time off so it's just constant communication with the customers well I believe a lot of the challenges are um, is just pe a lot of it is people's time uh, we tend to do a lot more nowadays than what we used to so time is a factor and I think people are looking for ways of having it quick and, and not have to worry about going out of their way and and having to do all the stuff themselves uh, it's probably why the internet has been so good because it's right at your fingertips and and people don't have to travel so those would be the challenges would be trying to schedule around people's time and I guess that's where the advertising and marketing would come into play to help the people to remind them that you're here and and try and find things that makes it easy for them to shop and not have to worry about loss of time. I just balance it by doing a little bit of everything on a daily basis. Uh, our children are old enough. They help out a lot in our different businesses and uh, and we just enjoy what we do. So I think with the fact that we enjoy what we do, we find the time to work things out. So it's some days some days are good and some days are bad, but we seem to be okay with it. so. <laughs> So Margaret raises some good points there about the importance of live here, buy here. She talks about the cost of gas and then they talk, she talks about online shopping. And I think sometimes that's what people forget is, you know, they think maybe they can find something cheaper in another, um, you know, area, but then they don't factor in the price of the gas or they don't factor in the shipping costs or even sometimes you're buying from the States, there's going to be a uh, customs cost on top of that. So by the mm -hmm. time you're done, what was a $10 item now becomes a $20 item and they may have been able to buy it here locally for $15 so they would have saved money and I think that's part of the education of the importance of live here by here absolutely and I think that you know the, the the other part of the education is really understanding money that's spent locally actually multiplies in the community a lot more than money that's spent at a you know at a big box store or these sorts of things and so again it's it's really understanding the consumer perspective which is I have a budget of this much and I need to be able to you know feed my kids on this kind of money and I can get it cheaper at this store but then understanding what is the sort of the next layer of that with respect to the community prosperity of understanding if we have a vibrant downtown and these sorts of things and also understanding how does that money then roll through the community so if you're shopping with a local um, shop owner who then is now earning a living who can then shop at another local you know so I think that there's that that and that is part of the education piece I think that Dufferndop is in the chamber and the BIAs can bring back to the to the uh, residents in this community through something like live here, buy here, have little um, facts around what is the value of money spent locally versus money spent um, sort of outside your community or at a big box kind of store. Um, absolutely. Now, um, you know, just 
if you had a magic wand, and I mean, from the research you've been doing, where do you see, or what do you see as the gaps? I mean, we've talked a little bit about the department stores, and that was, you know, the feedback from the survey. But from everything that Dufferin.biz has been doing, where do you see some of the gaps, though, in what is missing in our community that can make it even more vibrant? Who may, which maybe could make that a 100% success rate? Mm -hmm. And I guess it depends on the community because, you know, Orangeville has quite a bit of stuff. There's not a lot of stuff that's missing necessarily from there, but because Dufferin is so much larger than just Orangeville, right. there are, you know, the communities of Grand Valley and Shelburne that, that have less stuff, let's say. So I think there's real opportunities to build those downtowns out to understand what makes the, the most sense. And, and the reality is, you know, if you look at geographically how large Dufferin is, you know, people do come down to Orangeville, but it's quite a distance if you're at the top part of Dufferin. So right. I think that there needs to be that sense of how do we um, how do we build out those smaller centers because they are starting to grow. I know um, in Grand Valley they're growing and in Shelburne they're growing with a lot of new uh, new homes being built. So how do we understand that? And I think that's again where we can take this research back to those communities and say, this is what the people are saying. How can we help you then attract those stores that make the most sense for your community and that will have the best chance of success for your community as opposed to just necessarily replicating or sort of going on without that background data. Now, what can some of the businesses do to promote the campaign? Like, I mean, I know there's a sticker that we put in the, um, that we've given out and the BIAs have given out as well, mm -hmm. that people can put in their storefront. But not everybody has a storefront necessarily. Some of these businesses work from home as well. But how do they promote it? Like, what kind of tips could you give them to help them really drive that home to their customers? Well, I think there's lots of opportunity, and I think Margaret mentioned it um, quite well when in the video when she was talking about how she engages her customers in conversation when they come in. Where do you come from? from and how right. you know you know what are you looking for and these sorts of things so I think there's a real opportunity there to start that conversation to say you know oh you're looking for that I don't necessarily have that but this store may have that so there's an opportunity to mark co-market together okay great well thank you very much Teresa for spending some time with us today and talking about Dufferin.biz we're going to take a short break here on uh, the Chamber Matters but when we but, but when we return, we're going to take a little trip up north to the beautiful town of Shelburne, so don't go away. Mm -hmm.